Hello and welcome to your last ever, fingers crossed, maths lesson recorded at home on YouTube. So today then we are just going to do a big rewind of the whole of our ratio topic so far so that when we come back into school we can pick this topic up, we are all confident with what we are doing and we can take it another step further. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewind all the things we've been doing so far and then I'm going to set you an LBQ uh, for you to have a go at. So what are we doing? Well, we are comparing ratios and we are practicing at new learning. And obviously the whole reason we look at ratio is so we can compare two quantities. Ooh, there we go. Okay then, so this is rewinding back right at the start of the week. When we say for every something, there are something. So how would you fill in the gaps for every, there are, you are hopefully telling me for every nine carrots, for every nine, oh dear, hopefully this is the last time I've got to do writing on a computer. So for every nine carrots, there are three onions. How could we write that as a ratio? How could we write that? Well, we could put C and O at the top so that we don't get confused. And we can write nine, hold on, that means two, nine to three. For every nine, there's three. For every nine carrots, there's three onions. Is there a simpler way we could write this ratio? Well, hopefully you can tell me that nine and three have a common factor, and that common factor is three. So we could divide nine by three to make three, divide three by three to make one. So for every three carrots, there is one onion. So those three carrots would go with that one onion, and for those three carrots, but have that one on you. So this is the simplest ratio, it's the simplest way that we can write this, three to one. What fraction then of the vegetables are carrots? Well, you have to think about how many vegetables there are all together. So if there's nine carrots and three onions all together, we add them up, there are 12 pieces of vegetable. There are nine carrots, so I can say that nine twelfths of these vegetables are carrots. I can also simplify that by dividing it all by three, which would be three quarters. And if we look here, that's the same as saying three out of, three out of one, four, three out of four. Okay, hopefully it's all, all making sense so far. If not, go back and watch those videos from before. So ratio is a part to part comparison. A part to a part and the total number of parts make my whole, okay? So ratio is a part, two part comparison. Okay then, and then for every something there are something, and can you write this as the simplest ratio possible? Off we go. Okay, so hopefully you are telling me that for every six potatoes, you need two turnips because they are turnips. So for every six potatoes, there are two onions. So I can write this as six, two, two. Is there a simpler way of doing it? Yes, I can divide it all by two, which would be three to one. Three potatoes for every one onion. Okay, what about them if there was 12 potatoes? How many turnips would I need? What about if there were eight? Well, I've put, see, I've got onions as well. Goodness me. What about if there were eight turnips? How many potatoes would you need? You've got two questions there. So use the rate, use your basic ratio before, before. So what about if there were 12 potatoes, how many turnips? And what about if there were eight turnips, how many potatoes? So pause video, have a go. So I've written P and I've written T, potato and turnip. So I can see here that the ratio is six to two. And I know that from before, so if I divide them both by two, my basic ratio would be three to one. For every three potatoes, there is one turn. So if I now want there to be 12 potatoes, I'm gonna write 12 on the potato side. Okay, it's 12 on the potato side. This is the potato side here. So you can start from either of the ratios. If I start from this one here, what have I multiplied three by? to get to 12. How many lots of three do I need to get to 12? Well, I need four. So 
so how many lots of turnips do I need then to make sure that these ratios stay the same? Well, I need four lots. So four times one is four. So hopefully you can see that if I had 12 potatoes, I would need four turnips. And I can see that from the picture. Here I've got six for two. Well, if I doubled the amount of potatoes, I need to double the amount of turnips. The next question then, what about if there were eight turnips? So would I write the eight on this side? No, because I'm looking at turnips. I'm going to write the eight here. So, what, so again, you can go from any of these ratios. I'm just going to go from this one. What do I multiply four lots of turnips by to get to eight? Well, I multiply it by two. So what have I got to multiply this side by? I need to multiply it by two. 12 times two is 24. So for eight turnips, you need 24 potatoes. Okay then, what we're going to do now then is you are going to go onto LBQ. So I'll type it up on the screen for you. So it's www.lbq.org forward slash task. When you get onto there, it will ask you for a code. The code will be on Class Dojo. If you can't find it, message us and we'll be able to give you the code. So these questions will start off nice and easy. There are four stages of LBQ. The first one is all about your understanding. The first one will start off nice and simple. Then it will go on to a fluency set of questions. These questions will be about trying to do it in your, in your head, thinking about your mental math as quick as you can. Then we go on to a problem solving. So these might be worded problems. You might even have to um, write out your answers or explain it. And then the last one is a reasoning section where you probably will have to explain your answers and type out how you got to that, uh, that answer. Okay, off you go onto LBQ. I will be looking at your answers and see how well we do. Right, we are so excited to have you back next Monday. We can't wait. So we will see you then. Goodbye.